Hey, welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're going to continue to go more in depth with fire starting, different types of wood, how to purify your water, and also I'll be showing you three essential knots that you can use in many situations and may be the only three you need. <laughs> Stick around. If you've been hanging with us so far, you know we've been discussing a lot of fire starting tips. We've been talking about the many comforts that you can utilize in your backpack out in the wild. We've been doing foraging, fishing, and all around tips and tricks to make sure that you can survive out in the wild. The whole point of that is, is so that you have a comfort and confidence, a self-efficacy that you can get out there and be yourself. Being out here to me is about self-reflection. It takes a minimalist approach to see what's going on on the inside of your head. How organized am I? How planned am I? How much can I do? What do I know? And if a tough situation occurs, will I have the skills necessary to handle it? In this first season, all we're trying to do is get caught up with the basics so that we can build on that and improve in later episodes. Now let's go ahead and get started with one of the most essential knots that you're going to use out here. This is what I like to call the quick release knot because all you gotta do is pull this and it all comes loose. First, you wanna make sure you have that loop and this tag. Because this knot is so effective, I've kept the ropes to the hammock. Basically, all you wanna do is find the width and tie a knot just like this, making sure the tag is hanging out the side. You'll see it again. Quick release. And you find the spot, wrap it around your hand, pull it through like this, leave the loop and the tag. Now all you do is put your carabiner through here and it's at the right length. Now that we're comfortable and set up, let's talk about this fire. Now let's find some dry tinder. Now before we finish this fire, let's go ahead and talk about the two different types of firewood. So this would be a hardwood, and this is a softwood. You can see that there's a darker tint to this wood because it has all the resin sapped into it, and this one's much lighter. And you can also see that the fibrous hairs are growing much closer together. Whereas this one kind of has more of a blocky, almost chewed up look to it. I think the hardest part about this is gonna be collecting the specific woods. And I think the best advice I can give you is to look for the specific tree you're trying to find, like oak. Right now I'm avoiding pine because I want activated charcoal, white ash for the next episode. Just want all the hardwood uh, for this part. All right, so we found something called a southern live oak, which is... This particular oak has a special kind of leaves compared to other oak trees, and it's also very bendy and twisted. I suggest we look for dead trees that are laying on the ground and are already pretty dry from the top, and we'll break limbs off of that. You can always look around the ground. You can always find the dead ones on the ground, but there's a chance, depending on where you are and what time you're camping, that a lot of the things on the ground will be wet. So the first thing you want to look for is large dead limbs that are on the ground that have dry limbs that you can break off. This is a perfect example of what I would use for firewood. Now that we've found all hardwood, let's start activating charcoal. Quite literally, all I'm doing is burning hardwood and collecting the ash. Hardwood ash is what's known as a hydrocarbon. It's still an activated carbon or activated charcoal. It's just not gonna be as effective as what you would find in the store. Hopefully, if everything goes well, I'll be showing you how to make it in a higher quality in a further episode. We took the heat away. That is, by the way, the third way to extinguish your fire. It's by removing the heat. Be careful, as it could still take a while to cool down. And that's what you can brush your teeth with. There are quite a few essential uses for charcoal, and I'll be showing you a couple in the next episode. Now that we've gotten through that side note, let's go ahead and start this fire. As always, we're going to start with a bird's nest and the driest material we have. Break up some small limbs. And slowly add heavier wood to the top. Be sure to always have more than one way to start a fire. These are known as stormproof matches. They're in my first aid kit. They burn kind of like a flare. In addition to these matches, I always have two lighters with me, because obviously, sometimes things just don't work out. Now let's move to our next fire tip. 
And when it comes to collecting firewood, you may be getting it somewhere away from your site, so you're gonna want a way to carry it. Do you? Lay the string down on the ground. Put your wood on top over here. And you're gonna pull it over. And you can use just about any knot here. It holds it. And on the other one, quick release. So, so now you have a way to carry a lot of wood quickly. Now that we got our fire started, we're gonna talk about comfort and understand that we don't mean complacency. We just mean making it as comfortable as possible while you're out here. With that being said, most entertainment is electronic, so you're gonna need a power source. Make sure to bring one with you. But if you're bored, you can always stretch, meditate, learn a new skill, or just hang out with your friends. Being in nature is kind of like a mini vacation. You can be who you want and do what you want. That's one of the freedoms you get. But there's no real way to completely escape reality. So let's talk about food. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and cast this rod out to see if we can catch anything while we're cooking. It's not likely, but it's always worth a shot. Today, we're gonna be cooking one of our favorite meals, breakfast. Make sure to have some napkins. For this, we need some bread, eggs, which we put in a mason jar, some bacon, an apple and oatmeal, which we'll be showing you in another episode how to make this killer apple oatmeal. And of course, our cooking setup from the last episode. well and fed let's check our fishing pole in this episode I'm going to show you kind of how I set up my travel pole I like to keep it as convenient as possible so I always have it set with a Carolina rig this sinker is super helpful for getting out of snags on the bottom followed by the mechanism or swivel and then a little lock so I can switch bait if you don't want to use that here's an example of a way to tie two strings together just twist them both together hold the end tags and then split from the middle here. Pass the two tags through it and make sure they stay where they are. Now hold them and slide the two sides together. This ensures a straight line and is very effective for fishing and other uses. The third knot you're going to want to know is called the fisherman's knot. It's effective for attaching hooks. Run your string through the eyelet of the hook. Now twist it around itself. Pass it through this loop, and then the loop you've made. And then all you have to do is slide it down. The amount of times you twist it will be determined on the thickness of the material that you're using. Pass it through this loop. Pass it around through the loop that you've made. Hold this tag. And then slide everything down, making sure that this tag sticks out. You can even tighten it. And there you have it. We're now ready to start fishing. Now that we've been fishing, let's talk about a little bit of foraging. In this area, near the beach, there's something known as prickly pear cactus. The pink fruits on it are actually edible. If you decide to try it, try small amounts first. Another thing that you can find in this area is partridge berries. These things have all three vitamin A, B, and C, as well as many minerals, including sodium. B6 
be sure to pull directly from the partridge plant as holly trees are not edible and they grow close by. The berries look very similar. Now we got fire, we got food, we've done a little bit of fishing, foraging. Let's talk about one of the most important things, water purification. These are iodine tablets. Although they're not my first choice for water purification, they are crucial for first aid kits because sometimes you can't just find fresh water. Be sure to read the back of the label as they all have different steps. The cotton in the bottle is to keep the moisture out. This is what they look like. Another thing you can use is this water filter. The whole setup is just this main filtration component. You use it on fresh water, attach it to the bag, and just pour through. I believe it would only be fair to mention that these do not work on salt water, so that you will have to find another method to purify that, and we showed it in the last episode if you're interested. That goes for the purification tablets and this water filter. Follow us in further episodes, and we'll show you other ways to purify it without either of these two systems. I really do hope you're enjoying the series so far, and you're learning a lot along the way. We have many more episodes planned for you in the future, and this season is just the basics and to set a foundation to show you a wealth of knowledge to get you started. And it's also to show you where I am. So if you have any tips, critiques, or techniques that you want to share, feel free to put them in the comment section so we have them before season two, and I can get that information out to you and everyone who needs it. It's also good to remember that a lot of the skills, tricks, and tips we're showing you here are useful in everyday life. But now it's time to break everything down and head on out. As always, leave no evidence or remnants of you being on the site. And if it's not a total inconvenience, maybe pick up some trash that's not yours. If you've been following me since day one, I want to personally thank you. And if you haven't, I want to invite you to subscribe. Because as an entertainer, and potentially a future teacher, I'm only as good as the followers I have now, and with you on my team, I know we're going to do great things. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next time.